Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today, we're going to be analyzing griefer behavior. I've been running a public server for almost three months, and this has given me loads of experience with griefers. I've had to immunize and update the server to protect it from their behavior. And we're on the server. So, right off the bat, something you should understand is the griefers really focus almost exclusively on the center of the world. And they lose interest quickly. So the first thing that people will do is just clear out any items you have in the server. So they'll look for things that you have, right? There's a chest right here, so they'll clear out all these and take everything. There's a chest here, right? They'll clear out all this stuff and take everything. They'll also reword signs. Their favorite is doing this. I bet you can imagine what they're saying. So I've had people just replace every sign in the whole base with this. Another really common form of griefing is just with portals. People you know who you play with will do to you at certain points. This video is going to help you deal with some of your friends. <laughs> Basically, it's really easy to abuse people with portals because you can just, like, this is a viewpoint, right? And if I go here, I go up here and then everything's fine. You know, this is how it's supposed to work. The portal leads to a safe view spot that shows you sort of where you can go and gives you a tease of the different areas in the server, right? But imagine that this portal were a bit closer to the edge there and facing the other way. Well, I can show you exactly what would happen when I went into it. I would just simply fall down here. Oh. You'll just die. So you have to be really wary of portals in general in Valheim. And we can actually tell that this area was visited by a griefer. And the reason I know that is because the way things are destroyed. You see how these objects are floating? This is a line of things I made invincible. And this is a way that you can test when griefers join the server. Because they'll use items like the cheat sledge. And here we are, we're back at that arena from earlier. But now it's still intact. I'm going to show you exactly how they destroyed it. It's really annoyingly simple for them to do. They just need to log onto a different server, spawn this cheat sledge item that's already in the game, and then they can just join your server with it. They don't need to hack, they don't need to do anything. So they can just do this, and then boom. <laughs> Everything just gets destroyed, and then it looks familiar, right? Because now, what they have to do is go force delete, and then make something up, like four, and this will actually delete everything. So there are ways that they can do it, but it's harder because they can't force delete on your server unless they actually are hacking and they're using a client that gives them admin privileges even if they're on their server. And that does exist. Anyone can just join your server on Valheim and have admin privileges. There's not really anything you can do aside from make sure that person is banned. It's all because of certain tools that exist. They can just download them and basically it means they can do whatever they want. The tools are more custom stuff and they often have keyloggers and all this sort of thing, so you really shouldn't download them if you feel tempted. It's a bad idea. Another common griefing behavior is to just liquidate chests, and they'll take every single item. One of the simplest ways to protect yourself is to just get in the habit of hiding things. Uh, it really does wonder. Stuff like this, for example, there's a chest here. You, you can use it just normally, right? But you can't just get it. You can also spawn items in with certain dev commands, right? Like this chest here that someone's taken everything from. But these are much more obvious because they're, they have really big hitboxes. So that's really not ideal. Let me show you a chest that's much, much better hidden. And basically, you go here, and then you have to look in this corner. And then if you find the magic sweet spot, see, it's right here. I can open it and boom, look at that. Not a single item taken away. No one has ever found that one, and you can see why. You can also hide things, but not as well, right here, like when they see this chest. But there's actually another chest right up there. And see, no one found that one. So by hiding things pretty well, you'll be able to always have items around, even if someone joins the server. It just simply will take them too long to find every secret. And people will also try and steal black marble. And personally, I don't think they're griefers, really. It's more that they are just trying to get the resource, and it's kind of hard to get it normally, so you can join other people's servers and try and take it from them. Apparently, I, I don't know, I didn't think about it that way, but that's what a lot of them do. So they'll join the server and try and steal the black marble here. They'll usually put a stone cutter down. So I actually made this temple for them, where they just go in here, and then it teleports them into this giant cube of black marble. 
and gives them instructions on how to farm it. But I found that people don't really use it that much, and they still prefer to do things in a griefy way. So, say lovey. So this cheat sledge here really is your main adversary. This behavior, see this destruction what I'm doing? This is what people are gonna do. Sometimes you'll get more dedicated hackers who are gonna use terrain tools. But most of the time, you just get people who aren't hacking, they just have this cheat sledge item, and then they're just gonna use it and try and destroy stuff. All you need to do is make things invincible. You can do that using mods. So here we are, assuming we're a hacker using dev commands, and we can get onto your server. They go and they find something that's really beautiful, that, they, that looks like you worked really hard on. And then they'll use a ter terrain reset tool, something like this. So people will do this, and they'll just cover all of your buildings in so much terrain, just like this, that there's no way for you to actually, like, fix it, unless you have a backup. And that's what I hope you're motivated by in this video. You have to use backups. If you don't use backups, then inevitably this will happen at some point, and it has to happen for you to figure out who the guilty people are and ban them, so you have to use backups. That's really, really important. Another thing I've seen people do is they go around and they delete everything, usually in the center of the world or to your base if you had a portal in the center of the world. They go around doing this, and then they just reset it back to the default. So you can just go around and reset all of the terrain, right? And you can basically just force the server back to how it was just by deleting everything and using these terrain tools. So I've gotten onto the server before, and there's, it's just like this. As you can see, everything's gone and destroyed. So you absolutely must use backups. If you want to support my channel, then consider checking out my tutorial all about setting up your own dedicated server. It costs around $15 to $20 per month, and it's a great way for you to play Valheim with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!